This is Charles Kale with Travel Mall TV in Tokyo at the uh, World Travel and Tourism Council Summit. And it is 99 days countdown to the London Olympics. I'm here with uh, Mr. Christopher Rodriguez, who's chairman of Visit Britain, uh, very much involved, obviously, with, uh, with the Olympics. It seems like only yesterday, Christopher, that you, uh, you, got, the, you got the Olympics and, and groundbreaking take, took place, and now you're, it's only 99 days. And we've got the Queen's Jubilee at the end of uh, May, uh, which is a, a pretty big event, which we have to deal with first. So uh, this is a big year for us, and a big year for the UK. Uh, absolutely, except from weddings, to, to, to birthdays, to uh, Olympics. Now, it seems like uh, from, all, from reading uh, all the accounts, everything's ready. Um, and probably, as with all other major events like Olympics, some of the accommodations providers and those people who think they're going to make a, a million dollars out of uh, renting their 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 flat are going to be disappointed well i think there's still going to be some space available so uh, last minute bookers for the uh, accommodation i think will do fine tickets of course of uh, they haven't completely sold out there's still tickets there's still a lot of tickets available for the paralympics which in my view is equally exciting in fact it's very moving uh, when i was uh, ceo of visa we were very much involved in starting the sponsorship of the paralympics and i got to go to a number of those events and it's an extraordinary experience to watch the human achievement uh, in the Paralympics, even more than in many respects than in the Olympics themselves. So uh, people who want the Olympic experience, the Olympic venue, uh, should think about going to the Paralympics, and there is space available for that, mm -hmm. and tickets available. I imagine there will have been, or I had heard that a lot of people in UK, when the tickets came out, they just they, uh, they just bought whatever ticket they could get, and many people may not end up going. So there'll probably be. Oh, I don't think there'll be very many people who got tickets who won't go. Uh, in fact, it was slightly the reverse. The marketing of the tickets uh, and the excitement about the event domestically was such that many people applied for tickets and didn't get them. And I managed to get three events. Uh, that's less than a lot of people. Uh, but more than many people, uh, and I applied in the lottery the same way as everyone else. But uh, I think uh, there's still some football tickets available, as I recall, from around the country, and there will be some last-minute tickets available, uh, I'm told, by the Olympic organisers. So uh, one shouldn't give up hope, one should continue to go, and a lot of the, for overseas visitors, a lot of the, uh, well, not a lot, there are still tickets available on the overseas allocation, so they, they should contact their, their local uh, Olympic ticket provider. What is your forecast of the legacy and the effect, uh, resulting effect of the Olympics on tourism to Britain uh, after the Olympics? Well, I think that the big three events that we've had, the Royal Wedding last year with its extraordinary global coverage, which has led to a very high global coverage demand for the Queen's Jubilee, and of course the Olympics and Paralympics means that we have an unparalleled opportunity to showcase Britain. We did that around the Royal Wedding. The story was not just the marriage itself, but where they lived. So people wanted to know about Anglesey, they wanted to know about the, the Royal Households, they wanted to know about Cambridge. Um, there were lots of things that we could build the story around. And the same is true for the Jubilee in respect of the Olympics. Uh, of course, the torch relay, which starts even sooner than 100 days, uh, is this year not going around the world, but going around the UK. And you can be sure that pretty much every iconic tourism site in the UK is going to be on the path of the torch relay. And a few of the people don't know about it. Um, so we use this to showcase the nation uh, and build the aspiration to visit Britain from around the world. And that's the real opportunity for tourism. In the year of the Games, as you'll be well aware, uh, history says that there's a displacement effect, that actually the volumes are lower in the year because people say, I'll go to Britain next year. I'm delighted that our first quarter numbers show an increase, so we're beating the trend, but we will have to work quite hard during the course of the year to make sure that people uh, recognize that Britain, the whole of Britain is open for business. 
uh, around the games time and around the country. Uh, so uh, this 366 day year is one in which we have to mark it pretty hard. And then after the games, of course, we switch the message to now come see for yourself. Um, so it's a, it's a theme series of steps to take advantage of both the showcasing and the gaps that open up in demand and then to get people to say, now I've seen it on the screen, I want to come and see it for myself. And I presume the Queen and uh, her family will be quite involved with some of the events uh, during well, the Olympics? Well, she's very involved with the Jubilee, since it's her Jubilee. Um, and I believe that there are some 150 heads of state coming to the Olympic Games. So I would imagine Her, Maj her Majesty will make an appearance in some of those events. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if she was uh, quite evident at the equestrian events, given that that's her particular right. love. Um, there, of course, are no events for corgi dogs. If there were, she would probably be getting her <laughs> own gold medal. Christopher Rodriguez, chairman of Visa Britain, 99 days countdown. Yay! Way to go.